This is the Porsche 911 Targa Heritage Design Edition. And in my opinion, it's one of the best looking 911s to have come this side of the millennium. Now underneath all of this is a Targa 4S, but today I'm gonna to show you that there's so much more to the Heritage Design Edition than just a fancy paint job, some new wheels and a sticker set. But before we go into the review, if you like what you see, why not give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. So what is a 911 Targa? Well, in layman's terms, it's kind of like a halfway house between a coupe and a convertible. Now, whereas a coupe has the whole roof mechanism folded away into the back of the car, a Targa only removes the middle bit, leaving you with a glass window at the back and also a roll hoop. Named after the Targa Florio race, the first 911 Targa launched back in 1967 as a way of getting around the US's ultra stringent laws around convertible cars. Now they mandated that there was some form of roll hoop so that if you did crash and roll your car, you wouldn't have your head cut off. So what Porsche was able to do is essentially style it out. And the original one had this gorgeous roll hoop in the middle and a convertible rear end. Luckily today, that's all automated. So while we don't have that convertible rear end, instead you get a glass back, you don't need to manually remove the middle bit of the roof. It's all done electronically. Now, the roof will go from up to down in about 19 seconds, which isn't very fast compared to the 911 Cabriolet. But in my opinion, the Targa looks significantly better than the Cabrio. And this being the Heritage Design Edition, it looks even better. Now, the car that we have here comes in the exclusive cherry metallic red color, and I think it looks absolutely stunning. But if you don't like it, you can also get it in black, crayon, there's also Guards Red and GT Silver metallic. And of course, if you've got money to burn, Porsche will paint it in pretty much whatever color you want. Now, this car also has the Motorsport Graphics Pack. Now, this takes inspiration from old 356 racing cars that used to compete in the 1950s. I really wasn't a fan when I saw this in pictures, but as soon as I came to pick it up yesterday, I immediately fell in love with the way this thing looks. But what makes the Heritage car so interesting is it's littered with lots of little design features that are gonna appeal to the Porsche fan within you. Take the crest, for instance. This is actually using the 1963 design and they're dotted throughout the car and also on the key. There's a badge at the back for the Heritage cars, which actually harks back to the old 356s. Now, when they reached 100,000 kilometers, they would get a badge as a seal of approval. And so Porsche has taken that and worked it into its new Heritage design. You also have gold badging around the back of the car too. And again, that harks back to Porsches of old. And rounding it all off are these gorgeous classic style wheels. Now these are inspired by the Futch style alloys that appeared in the 1960s and 1970s. The 20s at the front and 21s in the rear. Now behind them sits black brake calipers. And according to Porsche, that actually harks back to its older cars. Although I don't really know what the significance of black brake calipers are. If you know, let me know down in the comments. And something I found very interesting is at the back of the car, you actually have these black tips for the exhaust. I've not seen that on any other 992 generation 911. Of course, that heritage theme continues on the inside as well with contrasting Bordeaux red and Atacama beige leather interior. Now, when I saw it in pictures, I thought it looked really terrible and quite tacky, but as soon as you see it in the skin and you're sat in here, it looks absolutely stunning. And if you find the red a little bit too bold, Porsche will swap that out for black. And like the exterior, there are lots of interesting design features on the inside as well. The sports seats have leather at the side, but the center is cream corduroy, which is not only very soft, but is another nod to the 1950s. The analog dials have mint green numbers and highlights, which actually harks back to the Porsche 356s, again from the 1950s. The door sills get the Targa 4S logo printed on an aluminium plate, and there's a little bit of text that says Heritage Design Edition. The armrest, meanwhile, has the Porsche logo embossed in it, along with exclusive manufacturer, which I can only assume is German for exclusive manufacturer, I guess. 
And speaking of that, in front of the passenger is the 911 badge and below that is the production number. This car is 121 of 992. Yes, that's right, the Heritage Design Edition is a limited edition car. Porsche is only making 992 examples and it's priced accordingly at £136,000, making it around 25 grand more than the equivalent Targa 4S. And from what I can see, I think they might have stopped selling them because you can't find them anywhere on the Porsche configurator. And that's a great excuse to check out Yes Auto because we've got plenty of new and used deals on Porsche 911s. So you might be able to find a Heritage Design Edition on there, if you're lucky. Now, before I go over what this is like to drive, let's run over the engine space. The Heritage Edition is built around the Targa 4S, and that means we get Porsche's three liter twin turbo flat six engine, and in S guys, that produces 450 horsepower. Now, that's all sent to each corner of the car through an eight speed automatic gearbox, and it'll go from zero to 62 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds, which is ludicrously fast. Now there are other Targas available. You can go for a regular four, which again, keeps the all wheel drive system, but power's lowered to 385 horsepower. And they've just released a GTS, which bumps things up to 480. And that will go from zero to 62 in 3.3 seconds. And that matches the Cayenne Turbo GT, which is a ridiculously fast car, and you can watch my review of that by clicking the link in the top right hand corner. And because this is a Targa, we should really talk about what it's like without the roof. Now at lower speeds, it's absolutely fine. You've got a little bit of wind noise, which you'd expect with a drop top car. Naturally, I've got the windows up so you can hear me speak clearer. But if I put them down, you get a little bit more wind noise around the edge of the door and where basically where the door and the roll hoop meet. But other than that, it's pretty quiet. And that's partly thanks to a new fairing that Porsche has installed above the windscreen that basically directs air above the cabin when you've got the roof off. Now I have heard some people say there's a bit of buffeting on the Targa. And that's basically when, you know, when you're driving down the motorway and someone opens a window, but all the other windows are up and you get that horrible thudding sound. Well, in most instances, you can't hear it on the Targa. However, when you're at about 70 miles an hour, like I am at the moment, you can sometimes notice it. It depends really what direction the wind is in because I'm not really hearing it at the moment, but there's the odd occasion of where you'll get a little bit of buffeting. But again, it's kind of to be expected that it's not going to be the most calm and relaxing experience when you rip the roof of your car off. Another area where drop tops tend to fall short is in the corners. And the reason for that is because when you remove the roof, you also remove a really critical part of a car's structure. Think about it, instead of having two strengthening points in a car, you remove the top part and basically the middle bit of the chassis is what's got to keep the front and the rear ends of the car together. To counteract that, most companies will add strengthening beams to their car and it's the same situation here on the Targa. Yet, even though drop top cars have come a long way, most still have an element of judder in the corners or over a bumpy road. And that's where the front and rear ends are kind of moving in different ways and you kind of get a little bit of flex in the chassis. But I've really not experienced that in the Targa. I have been going over some horrific roads and this thing just feels like an absolute breeze to drive. Now you can change the characteristics up of the car by going into the different drive modes. So Sport will open up the exhaust and hang on to gears a little bit longer. And then Sport Plus, you're taking away some of the driver assists and the gearbox gets even more aggressive and you get a sharper throttle response. So if you do want something that feels like a proper performance car, the Targa can really step up to the mark. The only time I would say it 
feels like it falls short is if you were doing really quick direction changes, you can tell that it's a little bit on the lazier side and that's because it's a very heavy car. It's around 1,700 kilograms, making it one of the heavier cars in the 911 range. And that's because not only do we have chassis strengthening, but we have that very heavy folding roof mechanism, which looks beautiful. And also this is four wheel drive. So there's a lot of weight in this car, which makes it even more impressive that it's so much fun to drive in a set of twisty bends. It's also really fast. Like properly, properly fast. And I, I feel like it's just, this motor is such a sweet spot because we drove the 911 Turbo S last year, which was just ludicrously powerful, but to the point of where you really couldn't use it on any road. You couldn't really make use of it on a motorway. You couldn't make use of it on a B road. Whereas this with 450 horsepower, just feels like such a sweet spot because it feels really fast. You get all the shove that you would expect from an all wheel drive turbocharged car, but it just takes a little bit longer to get up to speed. And so you can actually let the engine rev out and sing a little bit without losing your license. I really think this Targa 4S is a sweet spot in the 992 range because this generation of 911 seems to work really well as a GT because they are bigger and they are heavier. And so I kind of don't feel as guilty having loads of leather and technology in here and all wheel drive. You've still got something that is a fantastic driver's car, but it's super easy to live with. And it feels even more special when you've got something like the Heritage Design Edition, because not only does it look fantastic, but I feel like it's a bit of a marker of where all special editions seem to be focused towards sport and performance. And it's nice to have something of where they've just gone all in on design and luxury. I really wasn't a big fan of the Heritage Edition when I first saw it in pictures, but now that I've seen it in person and driven it, I think it's really such an interesting take on a limited edition Porsche because we're so used to particularly Porsches being fast and performance focused whereas here you're spending an extra 25 grand on style and comfort really over performance and in that regard I actually think it's worth the extra money particularly when you're comparing it to a base spec 4S when you start adding lots of options on yes this has a premium but it won't be quite the Golf it seems on paper. Now, if you can get hold of one, I think it's worth it. Of course, a standard Targa 4S is still a superb car, even though it's on the heavy side for a 911. And of course, for all things 911, be sure to head over to yesauto.co.uk for all the latest car news and reviews.